Yo, what's up everyone? My name is Sven and today I'm gonna show you guys something a lot of you have been asking for, aka the first version of my circle base design. I just want to say that this base on vanilla is mostly aimed towards building it for about six to eight people. Of course, if you're a solo or a duo and you feel like doing it or maybe on a modded server, feel free, but I just like to give that advice up front. Also, if you know what you're looking for, there's timestamps linked in the description of this video just to make things a little bit easier. But of course, I would also appreciate it if you end up watching the video entirely instead now without further ado let's jump into this video So, if you're still watching the video at this point, I guess you're interested in knowing how to build the circle base, aka my circle base V1. I would just like to point out a couple of things before we start talking about the base in detail. First of all, this base is designed to be for a group that's very actively playing a wipe. It's focused on online raid defense capabilities, and it's definitely not the best and cheapest base for offline raids. With that said, we won't really go into full detail about the raid costs and how to build this base, because that's not really what this this base and this video is about another quick heads up here but this is the v1 version of my circle base there will definitely be more versions in the future so make sure to subscribe to my channel for further base building but also for other rust content including gameplay videos all right, so I'd just like to talk a little bit about the history of this base. When I started playing Rust in January 2019, the biggest reason the game caught my attention was because of the base building. Now, after spending time watching base builders and how the whole base building worked, I started building my own bases. This circle base design and the ideas around it is basically my first ever real base design I came up with. Now, the reason that you haven't seen me playing a wipe with this base in the earlier videos is pretty much because every wipe I I played using this base in the first year I played Rust, I didn't record yet. It's truly amazing that I can still use this original idea in current base building 2020 Rust meta and still be able to use the original idea for this base in the current Rust meta. Now I just wanted to share that with you guys because now you also know a little bit of the history about this base and about my base building experience in Rust. So, before we jump into building the base, and of course the build costs, let me introduce you guys to the base. I'm gonna be showing you guys a preview of how the base is, and what the features are. Alright, so let's talk about the base, and let me give you guys a base tour afterwards. Something you notice when you see the base, is it's actually quite tall. And the main reason is because of the way the core is made, but also because obvious things like having the inner peak down floor, a floor below the shooting floor, and things like that, make the space taller. Now it has 6 TCs, meaning that if your main TC gets destroyed during a raid, the raiders would not be able to place the main TC back. They'd have to raid every single of your 6 TC. Let's just jump straight into the base and at this point i have placed all the deployables and all the doors you can see here we have the airlock when you come to this door you enter the outer core above there you have the inner peak downs left and right garage doors now this space is split into segments the inner peak downs are split into segments there are six segments every single tc holds up one segment and they're connected by these like kind of floating wall areas. Now, I really like to use this because it's kind of like a trick that you can use to use minimal amount of space when building a multi-TC base. Anyway, if you keep going, there's the other front door right here. And if we keep going, we'll just be going around the entire outer layer, so to say. And as you can see here, we are back at the front door. Now in the original video where you first saw me use this base, we are actually using the letters being inside of the wall and i'm pretty sure that rust has fixed this so to keep the base in its original form i've just added them outside of the wall a nice thing you can do here to make it harder for raiders to raid you if you're offline is you can pick up the ladders raiders first of all have to figure out 
wear your way into the chorus if they're door raiding. If we just go ahead and find our way into the core, you ladder up and this is where you enter the core. And I can see there's a very high amount that you have to climb. Three tall and we're on the fourth level. Now here we have a drop box area. Very important key to your base. And on the right here, we have the way up that goes to the inner peak downs, shooting floor and the top of the base. Turret here, guarding it. And on the left, if we go all the way around, we will enter another room with drop box areas or drop boxes on the right. Another turret here on the left and on the right here, more drop chests. Now, this is where you can eventually have like your tier two gear, etc. Go down here, we'll enter the core and on the left and on the right, we have turrets. Up here, we have another drop chest area. And this is kind of nice. It's it's nice to have a lot of storage, but you could, for example, decide to just completely honeycomb this as well. Go down here. We enter the main loot room guarded with all the garage doors. So let me just open them. All right. So here we have the main loot room and we have one, two, three shelves with six boxes. Technically, there should be another shelf here. I kind of forgot to place that. And up here, I usually have my repair bench down here. We have the tier three. And if you go, if you continue going down here, we will enter the bottom and the tc and this is where your main loot is this is also half walled from the top you can see yeah it's it's pretty expensive now this stuff here should all be armored especially the roofs uh, i just haven't made it armored yet my bad kind of forgot about it we leave the core again by going up we're on fourth floor now again it's quite high i know and we go up to the inner peak down floor now as you can see here this is kind of a pathway if we go right we enter the inner peak downs and we can enter the inner peak, inner peak downs from two different places. We can either go right there or we can go left here. It's completely mirrored. If we go up in this door, we are going to go up to the shooting floor. That's the only way up. But as you can see here, we have the bedrooms faced outwards. This is something I started doing recently. And I've, I'm also doing this on, on current 3x3s. Three three. And if you think about it, it is actually very strong. What you see a lot of people do these days is they have their bedrooms all facing inwards. And that doesn't only make your bedrooms targetable for splash damage. It also makes your bedrooms weak because raiders will know where they are. And they will basically, maybe even by accident, blow some of them up. And you don't want that. You want to make sure that it costs as much as possible to raid every single bedroom in your base. Another thing that you can see here, and I haven't placed the door here either, is even the inner peak downs, just like below, up here they are also split. Meaning that if raiders enter your base through, for example... This area, they only get access to one sixth of the inner peak downs and the same goes below. And this is key to online raid defense. Another thing that I've learned in recent wipes is if you can funnel the raiders into a smaller area, it's going to give you so much more advantage. You can do so much more. It gives you so much options and having the peak down floor and the below here, having it segmented split into different kind of areas is actually very strong because in an online raid raiders will never just try to blow your entire inner peak downs in an online raid it's, it's just unreasonable and there's four bedrooms here this is one garage door and they're placed in a way that nothing can be splash damaged if they want to destroy this to make it as expensive as possible how you fill up the bedrooms and how many you have is purely up to yourself you guys can see how to customize that in the actual base build going up here we have the shooting floor level and yes i know these are splashable but on the shooting floor that's fine in my opinion so on the shooting floor there's two ways up this one right here and this one right here and you can you can indicate the ways up or down by these walls just funneling the raiders into this smaller area instead of having it all open now this this and this all three are bedrooms or can be used as bedrooms here's nothing here's nothing but it allows you to look on your shooting floor and here's the way that you can get access to the shooting floor now that's repeated three times so if we go all the way up here you can see we have access to the shooting floor and if we walk around these triangles pretty much view everything of the base like there's a raider could be hiding here but there's not really a way anyone can hide on the shooting floor just by having these super simple windows and i really like that i just realized that i didn't show the inner peak downs so let me just go back down and show you guys that and see here we have the inner peak downs now this part right here is uh, where the segment is split this is the least expected place to blow and this is also the place where the uh, gap is in the wall and where the bottom gap is as well so that's why we don't don't really have so much control here and it's mostly because it's just not as important raiders should pretty much pretty much blow through this or this wall instead so as you can see here these are the peak downs they're very neat um you cannot drop down to them in any way you cannot drop in here either it's you can basically without any problem run all the way over and these peak downs are quite unique also because of the way the square is put on top of these triangle here it's very very important to split 
both your top of your inner peak downs and your bottom. Continue going up. We have the simple helicopter area. And that's basically it already. Like, there is not really more than that. I can, I can go ahead and show you guys where I would put furnaces and where I would put small boxes and all that stuff. But I feel like it's totally irrelevant. I, I rather focus on giving you guys tips in what I experienced using this base, but also why particular base design decisions have been made. In terms of uh, strength, this base is actually really strong, in my opinion. A lot stronger than uh, bases that I built that are focused on online raid defense. As you can see here, if they blow through any of these walls, it's always two metal and one armor to get into the core. And if you put uh, door frames here, it is a low chance that they get directly into the TC. It's not the strongest base for the amount of metal and uh, rest of resources that you need, but it does definitely be, uh, it's definitely considerable to build in uh, as a base to do an online raid defense with. So that's the base tour. That's basically all you need to know. And now let's talk about the upkeep. All right, so let's talk about the building cost. This space is expensive. It's built and designed for online raid defenses, and it's not made to be strong against offline raids. Now for the main core, which is one TC, you need about 40,000 metal and 401 HQM. With all deployables, etc., you could easily say this is about 50,000 metal to build just the core. So when we hop over to the multi TC part, which there's six of in total, You'd need about 15,000 metal to build them and about 50 HGram, but this depends on what you make HGram, of course. Now overall the total comes down to about 130k metal frags and 701 HGram, but with all the deployables, you'd easily be up to about 150,000 metal frags and about 1000 HGram to build the full thing with all the doors etc they're considering a few factors including how costly the space is but also that it's not really upgradable from the starting unit just make sure that you know what you're up to when you're actually going to build this base on the wide all right so let's talk about upkeep i just want to say that i've only upgraded all the um, walls to hgram that i think that are very important to be hgram as you can see here the main core the floors here they're the cheapest floor here and the floor there whatever you upgrade to hgram is purely depending on how your wipe is going so i'm just going to upgrade the most minimal and in the most minimal example the whole base in total is about 100 to 200 hgram a day now in our case it's 109 hgram a day so when it comes to this base talking about the upkeep this is split into three different groups we have group number one which is the main tc and the main core there's only one and as you can see down here if we access the tc it's 14,439 metal and 109 hqm now the reason it's so high is, ba is basically because i've placed absolutely every garage door i possibly could place and every single thing i could place so this is your base in in apps in its absolute glory if you don't get offline for about two days and you know manage to get everything so that's the main tc then we have group number two which is the two tcs that are connected to the doors they are a bit more expensive than the other four as they are connected to the doors and they have this part so for those we're purely talking about 3592 metal frags and 16 hqm now that's times two makes it in total about 7.5k metal frags but again that's also with all the doors and everything placed so for the last group group number three we have the tc four times and that costs 3100 metal frags a day and nine hqm again that really depends if you upgrade more to hqm the amount of metal will go down but overall this base is about 30,000 metal fragments and maybe up to about 32 to 33k metal fragments a day in its total glory all right so to start off this build we're always going to build in the main material that the whole base is going to be at in the end which is metal i will go over the parts that you should make into armor later on but overall the whole build will be in metal as that should be reasonable to do if you're playing a six to eight man wipe and you're building this base. So just like to clear that out. Also, I will not be placing any deployables. I'm purely going to leave that up to you guys to decide yourself where you want what. But I will talk about what I recommend to have at a certain place. So going out from the fact that you're building this on a wipe server, we're going to need a starter. And you can actually build this entire base from a starter. You can build it completely out, although it's not extremely optimal. So consider doing it if you want to. Start by making a simple circle with walls all around with one double door frame. You fill that up with a roof.
And of course, we are gonna put a TC in here as well. Now, if you put a door here, this is your basic starter. It's not very efficient, but it works. The next thing, um, because of the way this base is built, we're actually gonna have to be able to build already the multi TCs out. So let's go ahead and do that because it's important that whatever I'm placing here, these squares, you're not upgrading yet. So you place squares all around. And after that, you fill up the gaps with triangles. Now we're going to have to build out the multi TCs in a classic eight blocks out uh, multi TC way. I'm going to do one and then we're going to repeat the same step on all the other five as well. They okay, built one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares out. You remove all the squares behind you. And you place a triangle at the end, of course. And you also remove this triangle right here. Then you build back with half moons. You build all the way until here. Here you put a square. I can delete and remove all the twig half moons again. This time you can remove everything all the way out. Just to show you guys. Considering you want to upgrade stuff to the material and not leave it twig. We're going to remove this square and this square. Place a triangle here. Remove this square. Place a triangle here. And then remove this triangle again. And then you're going to want to have to upgrade this to at least stone. I would recommend to do that because anyone trying to grieve you while you're building your multi TCs won't be able to in this case. It's very important that you don't actually upgrade this triangle right, or this square right here. Because since the square that will be out here has to be replaced with a triangle. So you want to have this triangle on each, all six sides. So we're going to repeat that step and we'll skip ahead. All right. So after you repeat it, the multi TC step building out six times, you should be left with something like this. Now you can actually place the triangles and we're going to continue on upgrading everything to metal straight away again. So you place all the triangles back. I mean square, sorry. So you have something like this and then you're going to want to build squares out from each triangle like this. Leaving us with six separate segments that are going to be connected to a TC each and then the main core. So seven TCs in total, seven building parts. Now as the last foundation part you want to build out, so you build like this. Alright, so at this point there's either two things you can do. You can strengthen up your core or you can start building out and connect these parts to a TC. Now overall, building out your core and building this out towards a TC is usually something that I do in about 30 minutes total time in an actual wipe. So it doesn't really matter what order you do. I know this will decay, but it will only be minimal and at least no one will be able to get rid of it easily. So in this case, I'm actually going to build out the core first. So what you can, what you want to do here is where the garage door is. You want to put two walls and you want to also put a wall like this, closing it off basically. Now you want to repeat that all the way around. We're basically adding a layer of honeycomb. And then you also want to fill up the gaps in between here. Now we want to fill that up and I like to start with squares because they are easier. And of course you don't put the square here as this will be your way into the TC area. And then you fill the rest up with triangles. If you want to be 100% 100% secure can also half wall this or you have to at some point anyway but you might as well at this point so you half wall the core like that now for your way out you can actually put a temporary stair here you can make that twig uh, you can also have it permanent if you'd like walls all the way around here again put a roof on top there and a wall like that and then can have another door if you want but it's not necessarily required this is your upgraded starter unit from this point you wanted to actually do your tcs and the best way to do that is this is going to be the same step again six times start by thinking about where you want your front door i like to have two front doors at always and as far as i know what raiders usually do is if they door raid you they'd go through the door into your inner peak down area and they just blow straight into the core if it's online or offline it's it's usually what happens to, to bases like this. So you want to have your front door nowhere where there is a pathway. Okay, this wall right here is weak because it's not double layered. 
as there's a door here instead. So you don't want to have the front door anywhere near here. I would say let's have the front door on this part right here. So I'm going to use a single door here and a wall and we're going to do the exact same on the opposite. When I'm building a base like this, I like to have it fully symmetrical. So if we know where the doors are, we can also fill up the remaining four uh, segments, so to say, with walls instead. Now from this point, we are going to build out the TCs. And for the two doors, there's going to be a different way than for these four wall parts that are aren't doors. So we're going to just start with a wall part here. You put a square and a triangle like that. As you can see, this triangle is perfectly aligned with this. And that's what you want. Although this is not connected. There has to be something on top of this. I like to use low walls because you're able to look over them. But you can also use other... Like, for example, you can also use full walls or frames. I don't like that because this will be outside of the base. Then you're going to want to build, in my case, four blocks out. And then we're going to build a little triangle here. So we continue on and repeat that same step three more times. And when you're done with that, you want to think about how you want your front door. Now again, the front door is really customizable, like everything else. Um, I like to have the front door the following way. You attach two squares like this. Triangle here, triangle here and here, and here and here. That's the foundation for the um, front door. Now you repeat that on the other side. Now, before we place these triangles right here, there's something that you need to know. So let's just remove them quick because they aren't supposed to be there yet. A way to fill up the problem here where, for example, guys that have experience watching this video that know about multi-TC building, you know that if you place this tri uh, foundation, you cannot build this one. Now, a trick to still be able to use this space without having to build like all the way around or something, just an example, is to have a floating wall that's connected to the wall on the right. What you do is you place the foundation, you place the wall, and then you remove the foundation. You do the same on the other side. The way this space will be built later, it will make sense. And it doesn't really matter if there's this gap like that. So now we have a core around with the walls. And I'm just going to quickly finish the front door here. But I like to have it the following way. Two, two double door frames like that and a single door in the center. Same on the other side. Now the only thing that's really pretty much missing... Or the only thing that you have to do, other than placing all the doors and deployables at this point, is um, connect the front door areas also to its own TC. Now again, we're going to just build out one, two. So we're just going to do four. And put the TC. And we're going to do the same on the other side. So after you're done with that, um, there's a couple of things, a couple of ways you can upgrade your base. Now, since this video will also be recorded from top down, I'm just going to do layer by layer, although in a wipe might not be the best order to do. So what I like to do is add an extra layer of honeycomb to the core in the following way. There you go. And just to strengthen that up, we're going to place triangles. Now, placing the triangles here is actually something that you guys should know something about. Um, but as you can see here, I can attach this triangle to the core. I can attach it to the right TC over there. And I can also attach it to the left one. And for this one, you always want to connect it to the core. Making a gap on the right and on the left side. This one is already split with the wall. So you just attach it to that TC. There's not really any, any way you can do that one wrong. So this one is going to be a bit hard. But just make sure you clip this to the right part. It's very, very, very important. You know by checking if the pattern is right. There's a gap, not a gap. Gap. So that's part one. Now part two is to uh, segment up. The way I like to do it here is put a frame here and here. On each part where you have the floating walls. And then we're going to start building the core. So the easiest way to do that is th this was going to be the main loot room. By building with full walls all the squares out. Except for that one as there's already a frame here. You want to do frames all around. And on this one you want to do half walls like that. With a roof on top. In the middle you want to put a roof on top as well. And on all the squares you want to put a roof as well. The only thing here that's left really pretty much to decide is where do you want your way out. I'm going to choose to have this one as it's perfectly mirrored. Now I would not recommend to do that exactly the same. For all the other ones, you're just going to fill them up with half walls. 
except for this one and then you close that off now the way to completely secure this is obviously by putting a garage door right here like it's pretty un unreliable to have your base like this temporarily so it's extremely uh, necessary at this point that you continue on building the way into your core as there's only one garage door from your soon to be main loot room now we're just gonna fill up the rest with walls and we're gonna fill up the extra honeycomb we made as well see we forgot a wall there important everywhere is honeycombed with full walls and one last thing that you want to do here is also build the segments the parts that split the inner peak downs up one layer as well like that just to avoid the raiders from being able to splash damage we're gonna fill up actually we don't have to fill that one up we just fill up the top one here you can see there is a roof there we have we need to have that as it's the way into the core uh, just to make it as secure as possible we just add an extra roof right there just in case here we're gonna put a triangle because here's gonna be our way out of the core and we're gonna go up another layer again at this point you will realize that if you do like this and you remove that it's not clipping so you actually have to decide from the center on the right like that now that triangle is attached to the right wall as you can see there's a gap on the left now here in the core we want to also put two more triangles we want to add a full wall here which can sometimes be hard to place like that same on the other side and then we're gonna have a triangle here with a all fall here here and all the way around if we fill that up fill this up we fill this up and this one and just to make everything secure we put the frame here here and here and we add a garage door here so this will be your new way into the core and for the other side uh, i like to have the way into the actual core into the base with ladders as you guys know from the video that i used this base there is ladders on the inside of the wall and i'm pretty sure rust fixed this so just out of simplicity we're just gonna put the ladders on the outside and in this case we're gonna mirror them so if the way down into the core is on that triangle we're gonna make the way up into the core here like that now here obviously you need a floor and we need a frame with a wall now here you need to put a half wall because there's going to be another third layer of ladders like that. Continue on with walling off the rest. And we use full walls because it's cheaper in this case. At this point we don't put walls here, we only put them here. Very important. On these ones you're going to have to put a half wall on each one. Six times. And on top of that you put a low wall. Now the reason we have this is because of the inner peak downs and it will all make sense in a second why we're doing this. Now at this point we built another layer around as well on the outside just to match everything evenly. And we also split the segments up. Six, there we go. This floor right here is where you will enter the base, the core of the base basically. And you will also have access to the core, aka the main loot room and the TC all the way down. There's a couple of things you can do here at this point. You can um, very nicely make a square chest loot room with a ladder hatch on top and use that as drop chests. In my case, we're just going to half wall everything for the extra honeycomb layer and we put floors. And for these, we put triangles attached to the middle and see. Okay, so just a little cut here, but I made a tiny mistake. This, these half walls that we added, you have to remove them and replace them with a full wall. We're basically one floor too low yet for the inner peak downs. I thought we were already one floor higher. Remove them and replace them with full walls. Just to avoid splashing, we can also add triangles on those. We're gonna start building the fourth floor, the fourth level. And this is your main area. Now what you want to do here is, I like to have drop boxes. There's a lot of things you can do here. Bottom line is that for wherever there's a gap here, you want to add half walls with low walls on top. Wherever there isn't, like here, where there is this segment kind of, you put full walls. It's easier to do it from the outside, so. Now here we want to have a door frame for sure. And the same goes for this side that I accidentally blocked off, but that's the way into the core. Now how you fill this up is purely up to yourself, although I like to put a full wall here and here as it's so close to the entrance to the core, probably good. Now these areas you can put lockers, you can put vending machines, you can put boxes, whatever. But one important thing here to do before uh, building it up 
is to know where's your way up going to be. Now, in our case, let's just have it right here. And as you can see, this is not attached. So to add the triangle here to the right, we have to build something like this. But that's going to be our way up. So we're going to also have a door frame there. Something you should have, what I like to do is have a, f a wall here with a half wall like that. And then now here, I'd like to have a Dropbox area for some lower tier gear. And then we continue the pathway with frames. Now again, this you can fill up with whatever. Although I'm just gonna fill it up with walls. As that's the strongest. Now we continue on putting the frames. I'm just gonna have another mirrored loot room here as well. Why not? That's the way out. Continue on with frames. That's the way up. Since this is only one wall. I would recommend to split that up with another wall. And have the same kind of turret idea on that side Let's fill this up i recommend to start with squares triangles between the squares and triangles in the middle this point you don't want to put triangles here since we used walls here we actually don't have to do anything but just in case you actually did put like vending machines there let's just like completely fix it up here of course you don't put a triangle on where your jump up is aka here so that's the core pretty much now again we built out with the walls one floor up as normal and the same for the segments okay now before building the peak downs it's important that you don't put the final last third wall on here on the segments so you have a frame and two up and you have this one be gone so now we're ready to build the peak downs the best way to start is wherever you have this low wall kind of part you want to go out and put triangles like this then you want to put a square, which is creating this gap. So make sure it's connected to the outside wall. And then you want to have two triangles like that. That's basically one part. Now you're going to repeat that six times. So two, two triangles, square like that with the gap. Triangle, 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 triangle. So after you got them like this, and make sure there's this gap here for each square, you're going to see that there's like this kind of weird shaping triangle left that you cannot fill up. And that's why where these walls from the segments come in. So what you want to do is build out two half walls and then a low wall on top and put triangles like this. So you repeat that step on each six times on each side like that. And that's basically your inner peak downs. Next step. Very, very, very important is your bedrooms. How you want to have them, where you want to have them and why you want to have them in a particular way. Now there's again a bunch of ways you can do this my most recent uh, experience i have some tips here that i would really recommend you keep in mind when building the bedrooms one thing here when building this multi tc base is to realize that the fact here is that people can see through and can shoot through these gaps so most importantly to somehow secure these gaps while still building an efficient base so what i recommend to do so for bedrooms and for your inner peak down floor the one thing for sure is you want to have two walls blocking the way down and here's going to be the way up that's kind of the most important you can always build no matter what you're going to end up building this triangle make sure it's connected to the center and here you don't put any because it's the way up so that's the start now it really depends on what you like but something that I have noticed that can help you a lot against raiders not being able to easily get your bedrooms. The first of all, have them split. But the second of that, have them facing outside, aka into your inner peak downs and not towards your core. So the idea here is to have four bedrooms. With all four ways way out into outside kind of and then we put a frame facing that way and a frame facing that way same we do on the other side and to wall that off we put a window here and here for extra vision falling your bedroom want to see what's going on to make one of the two bedrooms bigger we delete the wall and we can add a wall like that there you can have an extra space for locker or something like that for the rest what you want to do in the core here is just have it protected like that you have two extra members you can put a bed here and another one here if you want to have one bed per um, bedroom and that basically allows you to have in total four bedrooms aka six beds if you put them in the core there now how you do this here is the best easiest to do i think is to split it or to not have doors on each side but to have a door there and a door there 
and then you could potentially use this for another locker area something along those lines and for the rest this basically speaks for itself but there's one very important thing that i like to do here on the inner peak downs which is to place a half wall with a door frame and the same way that we segment out the uh, six parts here in the base funneling raiders to only one part of your base controlling them the same way we're gonna do that with the inner peak down that way if they blow this side they only have access to this part of the inner peak downs basically only bedroom here only that one bedroom there in that case will be uh, pretty messed up but again it can also allow you to do some good raid defenses you know you never know so we split that off now we basically all we have to do is to um, fill up everything now the easiest way to do that is to start in the core all around connect the squares as well then the triangles so there we have our core now here we want to connect it to the center here as well here as well and here as well not on that one as it's the way up now for the way up to the base onto the next level i like to use two ways and here you actually don't need to use um walls although probably better to do and this one has to be attached to the outside again and again we're doing the right side from the core like that put frames there just so we remember there we go that's the two ways up it's very important to have two ways up at that point uh because it allows you to fight raiders that are on your roof better so let's just say here we have the shooting floor Now what is next on the shooting floor? Two things. I like to have double bedrooms. It's very important in current rust, I think. So we're gonna make double bedrooms. It's very, very strong. Second of that, I wanna make sure that these gaps are once again covered and split so that raiders can't abuse them. And third of that, we wanna make sure there's enough ways for us to be able to take back the shooting floor in case it does get taken over by raiders. So on the shooting floor, it's actually better to have your bedroom doors open inwards just because your shooting floor is a lot more accessible for raiders and anyone can basically get pushed into it. It's making your bedrooms pretty vulnerable, so to say. So in this case, I'm gonna go for um, something that's kind of modular, I would say. Something that I do like to have is we wanna add a little kind of like airlock here or at least so they're not straight away into this area. There we go. So that's our shooting floor. Of course, we need to put the doors and the window embrasures, etc. And then we have our final part. And this part is also very important because as you can see here, there's a gap allowing us to basically look straight into here, which is where beds will be. So it's very important that also on this floor, you use some kind of walls to block that off like that. Now it's nice to store helis. So let's just um, create an opening here and here can be random doesn't really matter where you do this frames are in the middle just for stability wall that around build squares on okay we can't do that so we just have to put uh wall or door frames on these sides as well just for the stability <laughs> that is basically it all right that was it for this one now if you've made it all the way to the end i want to give a special thanks in this video i tried to cut and make the base build video overall shorter and i'm really happy with the result now of course my focus and aim is to make the videos accessible for you guys so make sure to let me know in the comments what you think and if you like the new quality thanks anyway for watching if you end up using the base and you do some insane raid defenses or anything else please make sure to let me know feel free to send me clips or screenshots i'm always happy to hear that and yeah thanks for watching if you want to see more of me playing gameplay wipes where i'm also using the bases that i design or just more base designs go have a look on my channel and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already now one last time thanks for watching take care and i'll see you all in the next one